Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Atrocious Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp Exploring the Realms of Fantasy my name is Ken Boyter, and today we're going to be taking a look at Mary Poppins. <laughs> yes, it's Mary Poppins. And there's a good reason why. This is a 1964 film, if you're unaware. And it was directed by Robert Stevenson. And of course, it stars Julie Andrews and good old Dick Van Dyke. Hey, Gov. Now, the reason why I've picked this for this week is because it's Mothering Sunday this Sunday, yes. I believe that's maybe just in the UK. I'm not sure if it's worldwide. I'm sure you have Mothering Sundays, but maybe not this Sunday. So I started to think, hmm, mothers in fantasy. Not like that. I just thought, what, you know, what books or films or board games? No, have mothers that are in fantasy. What are the strong mothers in fantasy? And you know what? I couldn't really think of anything that was the main kind of character that was all revolved around that character. I even did a quick Google search. Granted, I didn't search for long. Maybe I could have searched for longer and found one, but I didn't. So I, you know, instantly when I thought about Mother Wing Sunday, I just thought about Mary Poppins. And I thought, yes, even though she's a nanny, she is the sort of mother that you really, really want, isn't she? After all, she's magic. <laughs> chim chimity, chim chimity. Just can't stop singing the songs from this fantastic fantasy comedy animation stroke live action film that is Mary Poppins. What's the setup? Well, if you don't know and you've never seen Mary Poppins before, it is actually set in Edwardian times, 1910. And the focus, well, yes, the focus is on Mary Poppins, but she comes into the film a little bit later. It's actually all about the Banks family, Mr. and Mrs. Banks, and their two lovely little children, Michael and Jane. And it opens up when they've gone missing again. They seem to be a bit naughty and they kind of run off away from their nanny, Katie Nana who is actually their nanny, see what they did there? And she's had enough. She's stomping around the house going, well, they've disappeared, they've run off again, we were out flying a kite and they've gone and I've had enough and I'm out of here. So she quits, she leaves the banks. Now, obviously, you can't have kids running around without a nanny. What happens to the mum, You, I hear you say? It's Mothering Sunday after all. Well, the mother, she is an interesting character. She's actually part of the suffragette movement. So that's a cool strand, a cool sort of subplot for, you know, for her character. You never see her actually on any of the suffragettes, that's not really necessary. But she's obviously dressed up in a little sash and she's going off protesting. So she's too busy to look after the kids. And because they are a very well-to-do family, back in the day, back in 1910, it was quite normal for a well-to-do middle class, you know, maybe upper middle class, to have a nanny and a cook and a maid. And Mr Banks, ironically enough, is a banker. He works for a big city bank and so he earns lots of money and therefore they can afford all of the luxuries such as a nanny. Now, what you're going to do when your nanny quits? Well, you're going to place an advert, aren't you, for another nanny. Now, the children, they come back, they actually, you know, they know how to get back. They were just mucking about. They didn't really mean it and they're very sorry. The father, Mr Banks, he's very upset with them, very stern. He's a very proper, upright sort of gentleman, you know, and things must be in their order and you don't just run off and all of that. And he says, no, I'm going to take control of the situation. I'm not going to let the mother choose the nanny because it's, you know, look what happened last time. I'm going to write the advert. So he dictates a, a letter to his wife and it's all very stern and the lady needs, you know, the nanny needs to be proper and know how to, to you know, bring up kids properly and do, do it the proper way. Well, the kids, they also want to help. So they write their own little letter. And they ask, it's very sweet, they ask all the little things that they want from a nanny, such as being kind and taking them for walks and just being a lovely, lovely person. Now, what happens? Mr Banks, he's not having any of that, is he? He wants somebody who's proper and knows how to bring up the kids correctly. And so he rips up their letter. Obviously, they're going to be a bit upset. He, doesn't, he hasn't got much sympathy for his kids, to be honest. And he rips up the letter, throws it in the fireplace. And this is where the magic begins, because unbeknown to him and anyone else, the letter magically starts fluttering up the chimney. And of course, yes, you've guessed it, because we had an opening shot of Mary Poppins sitting on a cloud, 
The letter gets to Mary Poppins and she applies for the job. Now there's a long line of nannies and they're all kind of stern and as the, you know, the father did put the advert out the way he wanted it, Mary Poppins, there's a big, huge gust of wind. Not like that, I don't think. I think it's a natural wind. And they blow all the other nannies away. So she's the only applicant. She walks in and she basically bosses him and in the end just says, I'm putting you on trial for a week. Amazing entrance. What a brilliant way to start the film. That's the setup. And in terms of, I was thinking as I was watching this, there's not a lot of plot going on here with this film, but that doesn't matter because what it actually is, it's an internal plot. It's a plot of the, the, the children and also, you might not have realised this if you've seen this already, of Mr Banks. Mary Poppins basically looks after the kids, but you know, she, she's also for kind of doing things correctly and th keeping things in their place and doing things properly, but she also realises that there's more important things. So the themes of the film really are about enjoying the moment and about understanding that what's really important in life, yes, having a job is important, yes, doing your schoolwork is important, keeping things tidy and orderly, but those are kind of on the peripheral. What's really important is your friends and family and cherishing every moment because it, life just disappears in a flash. So you have to embrace life, you have to take life and really live life, but enjoy it. And you know, what better way to enjoy it than having fun and laughing? And there's some beautiful sequences. So basically they go out to do various different things. They end up, um, I don't know if I give spoilers away, I'm in this film, so, you know, 1964. But they end up, you know, oh, there's a character, Bert, which is Dick Van Dyke, and he's a good friend of Mary Poppins, and there's a lovely little scene when they disappear and he does chalk paintings. He's like a jack of all trades guy, he's a chimney sweep man, one minute, he's, a, he's a, a one man band, that's how we meet him, he's doing his one man band routine. And he also is a street artist, and so he's got all these paintings, and they jump into the paintings, and off they go and have a lovely day at like a fun fair. And there's a beautiful sequence where, they, where Dick Van Dyke, Bert, his character, and Mary Poppins, they start flirting. And it's lovely, it's so charming, it's very innocent, it's beautifully done. There's a sequence with the penguins when they're being waited on, they're like little waiters, and it is just beautiful. So the actual plot is more about the children experiencing fun and life and adventure. And obviously they know that, that life is about that. But who doesn't know this? Out of all the characters, it's Mr. Banks. So that's where the story comes from. It's actually about the conflict of seeing stuff from, seeing things and life from Mr. Banks's point of view and actually seeing it from the children, Mary Poppins and Bert's point of view. And there's a lovely bit where Mary Poppins actually, he, she, you know, she's gonna be fired basically because there's too much fun going on. There's too much uh, merriment and the children seem to be ending up getting into sort of scrapes. But of course it's just, you know, it's just an innocent fun, it's adventure. And actually they're learning, they're learning about life, you know, proper stuff. Things that you need to know about humans and how to interact with people. But Mr Banks is having none of it, so he wants to sack her, but then Mary Poppins convinces him, kind of manages to make out that it's his idea to take the children to the bank. And that's a lovely twist because then the children get to see their father in his environment. And of course, inevitably, it does go a bit wrong. It all goes a bit haywire. And so therefore, you you know, it reinforces the, well, what is really important? Money, yes, money is important. But if that's all you've got, you're gonna lead a lo lonely, lonely life, a dull life. Money can't buy you happiness. It can help. It can obviously certain, certainly take away some, some worries, you know, about paying the mortgage and eating and, you know, paying your bills. But it can't actually it can't give you happiness and that only comes from enjoying life and actually uh, sharing those magical moments with people. And I, well, I won't spoil the ending of whether Mr Banks actually realises that, but there's a beautiful sequence where they're in the bank and there's realisation that happens you know, for, for a lot of the characters. And it, honestly, if you've never seen Mary Poppins, and I would imagine there's not that many people now that haven't seen it, it's a delightful film. It, I adored this. Now, I first saw it when I was a child, fell in love with it then. I then watched it with my own child and loved it then. That was probably about 10 years ago. And watching it last night, I absolutely adored it. It's charming. It's full of 
brilliant, beautiful songs. I'm not a musical, musical person. I like musicals up to a point. There's certain musicals I really detest, but I guess that's like in any genre. And, and I have to, I struggle with songs and musicals, the whole concept of that. But in this, it really works. And I worked out why. It's because the film is magical anyway. So people singing and dancing and all of that is going to happen. It's a magical film. It's in a fantastical setting anyway. Magical things happen. And therefore, with the songs, they are charming, they're joyous, it's uplifting. And yes, there's some dark moments in this film. I forget about those. There's the, the bird lady that's very sad, very melancholy. Plus, there's also a bit where they run off again. The kids run off after the bank sequence. They have a bit of a traumatic time. They run off. The father's distraught. And it is a bit kind of, you know, a bit, bit of tension there. And beautifully, Bert, the Dick Van Dyke character, he points out to the children, hang on, I feel sorry for Mr. Banks. He can't, he's not allowed to have any fun. He's, he's having to go to work every day. He's kind of trapped in a cage in this kind of, you know, the rat race. And so the children then start to see it from his point of view. So it's a beautiful crossover. There's so many messages in this film. I absolutely adored it. The acting is amazing. Even Dick, da Dick Van Dyke and his Cockney accent. I wasn't too bothered by that, actually. I didn't think it was that bad this time around. He's such a charming and, and wonderful and absorbing actor to watch. You know, he's, he's, every time he's on screen, it, it sparkles. And of course, Julie Andrews. Oh. She is lovely. She's the perfect Mary Poppins. They couldn't have cast it better. She's amazing. She's funny. She's witty. There's, there's a massive sense of humour that runs through all this, through all the characters and, and pretty much every scene as well. And she just embodies everything that you would like in a nanny or, you know, in a mother. And, of course, all of this was based on P.L. Travers' uh, original novels. And she was quite against selling it to, to Disney because she, she felt it was her baby. And you know, quite rightly, if you've, if you've created a character like this that's full of fun, very wise, and I, another character that springs to mind is that Nanny McPhee. I remember those films as well with uh, Emma Thompson. And it, there's so many similarities there. Mary Poppins absolutely loved it. It's a fantastic family film. If you've not seen it or if you have seen it but you've not shown it to your kids, I totally, totally recommend this. Mary Poppins, what's not to like? So many classic songs in there, so many great scenes. It's a fantastic film. Chim chimney, chim chimney, chim chim. <laughs> Mary Poppins. Yeah, what a fantastic film. I just want to point out the special effects did still stand up today, you know, 40 years later, 50 years later. Some were a little bit dodgy, like the fireworks, but you know, that's hey. The rest of it was amazing, and there were some lovely, beautiful touches. The magic, you know, she's got a magical bag where things just keep coming out of it. Lovely touches in the special effects serve the story and the characters. They're not there just for special effects' sake. Absolutely adore this film. It's very, very charming. Mary Poppins. So what I guarantee is you'll you'll smile. You will laugh at this film. Treat your mum this Mothering Sunday because she's special. Buy her flowers. Make her a cup of tea. Make her breakfast in bed. Maybe watch Mary Poppins with her. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. Remember to keep it unreal, especially if you're a chimney sweep.